<laughs> Let's drive across America, we said. Let's do a road trip to see America's art. We'll crisscross the country visiting great galleries and great buildings. This is Mae McCutcheon. This is Charlie Luxton. And together, we're going to travel 10,000 miles across America, taking in more than 25 states and a couple of cities in Canada. And what do you need for a road trip like that? But 35 feet and 11 tons of art bus. Of course you do. This is America. This is Artland USA. Welcome to Artland USA. We're on an art and architecture adventure from San Diego, California, all the way to the northern border above Portland, Maine. In this show, we're going from the sand hills of Nebraska right through to Minneapolis in Minnesota. But we're not going to ride horses all the way there. I'm certainly not riding horses all the way there. We could give it a try. In this show, I meet one of America's most exciting photographers, look at some wonderful architecture in Des Moines and Minneapolis, and work out the science behind some very famous photos. And I come across the world's largest easel, explore two fabulous collections, and then get kind of competitive when handed a rifle. Nowhere near. We're traveling about a thousand miles through Nebraska, Kansas, Iowa, and into Minnesota. And I've got this hunch that the RV isn't gonna have to struggle up too many hills. Kansas. I spent the first four years of my life in this state, and this is the first time I've been back since my family moved away. Some things haven't changed. The land is still very flat, and the wind continues to blow. We're here because we're looking for a very large piece of art. I'm not a huge fan of artistic reproductions, but I'm about to make a big exception. This is the world's largest easel by Canadian artist Cameron Cross, and he's agreed to tell me all about it, albeit long distance. You know, one of the reasons I chose the easel was that it's just so recognized all over the world. It's, um, you know, it's used by all artists, regardless of their culture or, or ethnicity and it's just one of those things that um, is really recognizable and, and associated with with art so it's um, you know I think no matter where you put this uh, large sculpture people are gonna you know ha have have a personal connection to it Cameron is planning to put up seven of these giant canvases around the world each site chosen because of its relationship to the painting and if you're wondering, Goodland is officially the sunflower capital of Kansas. What has the reaction been by the people of Goodland and also people who are passing through Goodland? What do they think of the piece? Well, I've learned uh, it's got uh, quite a bit of media. It was actually even a Jeopardy question at one point, so that was pretty exciting. <laughs> and, uh, <it> was, <laughs> I think initially the, the reaction is pretty much similar to most places. Um, a lot of people are very excited about it. A lot of people maybe question um, sort of the logic of, of putting up a, a, up a sculpture, but I think just like anything new, it just takes some time and... Um, puts them on the map, in It sense. puts them on the map and it, um, you know, you can see from the highway and it's just something else for people to uh, sort of drive in and, and, and have a look. I think it's all, it's all good. So I, I think, yeah, I think, you know, the, the, the response has been very, very positive. And I can see why. Come nightfall, these sunflowers won't be closing. From one tree to another, we're spending the day at the Walker Art Center. Described as possibly America's best contemporary art museum, the Walker has won plenty of accolades most recently for its new extension. I have a feeling that architecture hound Charlie will want to share some thoughts. This is the new extension to the Walker Art Center by the Swiss architects Herzog and de Murel. Now I think they're probably 
the best architects working on the entire planet today. And this building is an essay in what makes them so good. Look at the form. This wonderful kind of crank twisted form floating on a glass substructure here, on a glass sub layer. So the whole thing just lifts. But it's more than form, it's also surface. Look at the surface of the side of this building. It has real delicateness and texture. They've creased up metal mesh to give a lightness. And the light catching on the side here gives it infinite variation. It takes what would be a very heavy masculine form and makes it light and almost ephemeral. Opened in 2005, the expansion cost a cool $74 million. But when it looks this good, for me, it's money well spent. This building is, well, kind of bonkers, because as you move around the building, everything seems to shift. All the lines and angles are constantly moving and varying. It's as if the architects are, are both playing with you and inviting you to play with how the spaces line up. It's actually quite disorientating, but it's disorientating in a, in a thrilling way. Incredibly, the richness of the building's design is matched by the Walker's collection. Showing me around one remarkable sculpture is the gallery's senior curator, Philip Verne. What you see here, this car, uh, this untitled, unpainted uh, sculpture, is, uh, is not a ready-made. It's actually um, the story be behind this, uh, this sculpture that Charlie Ray identified uh, in a junkyard, a car, uh, and then brought it to the studio, disassembled it, piece by piece and recast it in fiberglass. So this isn't the car spray it's not the, No, 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 that's, that's, fi that's fiberglass. So it's wow. actually one of the most, if you think about it, it's one of the most uh, traditional crafted. way of doing sculpture. So it's reinventing sculpture. This piece is a monument of 20th century. 20th century being the moment when the culture of automotive transportation, the culture of car that we're still suffering from, you know, there is no, you know, why are we- an urban level, an urban social level, level. Why are we so attracted to oil so that we can run our cars? Uh, and that's, you know, this great progress, which is also our great failure, is what is uh, embodied in this car. What's also fascinating for me with this car, in terms of like an, an object that tells history, you know, in, the, in a noble sense of history, is that in the back you have this little sticker, which is Jesus is Lord. And oh, okay. we've, you know, again, something that the artist identified, what does it mean? This destroyed car, which has a stamp, this sticker, Jesus is Lord, what does it say about our culture right now? But it's a wonderfully crafted object. It's and beyond also its intellectual what, position, it is beautifully it's made. It's also what makes a great artist a great artist, is that everything comes together. It's actually content-wise, aesthetically-wise, it's totally, totally balanced. I mean, you can talk purely about sculpture, or you can talk purely about, uh, about politics, but I do believe that sculpture, aesthetic, Ethic are not that uh, separated, that, uh, and that's what makes a great, fascinating work of art. Because you know you can you can forget everything I've said about Jesus is Lord, about oil, about the 20th century, and just look at it as one of the most incredible Crafted ghost objects. Yeah. Object. <laughs> Artwork isn't restricted to the interior of the walker. Just across the road is the 11-acre sculpture garden, home to over 40 works of contemporary art. 
We've got a kid climbing on sculpture over here. Now, that doesn't happen indoors, does it? Uh, not that I know of. <laughs> I hope not. But there is, that's, yeah, there is few pieces indoor that people can touch, but we control that here. They can oh, look at them, look at them. They they're hold, all over it. Soon they're gonna, uh, they're gonna be members uh, of the walker. That's where it starts. You start to jump on the sculpture and then you get addicted. More than five million people have visited the garden since its inauguration in 1988. Many come to see Minneapolis's favorite sculpture. So the Klaus Oldenburg <laughs> has looked better. What's going on? We, uh, we're doing the dishes. Doing the dishes. Uh, we, we haven't done the dishes in five years, and we thought it was, it was time. No, every five years, we, because it's outside. I mean, it's like, and the, the, the weather is kind of harsh here. So every five years, it's important that we make it look as good as possible. I mean, it's one of the, the, the signature piece of the sculpture garden. And uh, I guess people, uh, people love it. It's, a, it's everywhere. I mean, like, you cannot think about the walker with not the spoon bridge and cherry, with not the, uh, the old handbook. about the fact that when people go in the museum they have to go through an admission process mm. and out here they could just walk in there's no gate there's no fee there's the first test is free uh, the yeah I mean that's also what a public you know we're a public institution and I think there is a level of what we do and we want to keep the, the level of, of accessibility as open as possible it would be great to be you know to have the same uh, policy inside, unfortunately, you know, there is a uh, harsh reality. Uh, so it's very important for us to be able to provide this absolutely open experience. It's a stunning center and a fitting end to a week so rich in the visual arts. I can't believe that Charlie and I are only halfway through our tour. From the wilds of Wyoming to the urban bustle of Minneapolis St. Paul, from the intricacies of handmade quilting to the grand forms of modern architecture, it's been an exhilarating week. And I even got to shoot some fruit. Next time on Artland, I come face to face with America's most iconic painting, see an engineering wonder of the Midwest, and encounter an artist, or is he a cartoonist? And I see two modernist masterpieces. Check out Chicago's exhilarating Millennium Park and ride a go-kart. I hope you drive that thing better than you drive the RV. Mame, why are you like this? I should win an award for the way I squeeze that thing through downtown Minneapolis, and that's not mentioned.